Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And a video for Honeybee Stamps. They just had a new release. It is Chef's Kiss Fabulous. I will have a link to the new release in the description box below the video. Definitely worth checking out. A lot of birthday themed products, which are super fun, but also several new lovely layers sets. Specifically, this is the iris. It looks weird, like just the wafer dies, but stay tuned. Um, I have a playlist at the end of this video of all the videos I've done so far using various Honeybee Lovely Layers sets because there are many. And this was only one of several that were released <laughs> in this release, but I just, I had to go for the iris because oh, I love irises. I love them. Anyway, um, I'm actually part of an Instagram hop kind of ties in with today's cards. I will have a link to my Instagram as well. It's always there, but I'll bump it to the top um, in the description box below. So you can hop on over there. There's a whole bunch of other uh, design team members participating and tons of inspiration, all the good things. Highly recommend checking it out. And then as always, not only will I have a link to the new release, I will also have my supply list, links to everything I used in the description box below. My links are affiliate links. All that means is if you click on one of my links and end up placing an order, I get a little kickback at no extra cost to you. That's what helps pay the bills and, you know, keeps the channel running, all the fun things. So yeah, I did some ink blending. I show how to assemble this iris, like I always say, like a broken record when it comes to Honeybee's Lovely layer sets. Once you see it come together once, it's like, oh, it makes perfect sense. Largest to smallest. Easiest way to explain it. So. All the things, added splatter, of course, fun stuff, and just keep watching, and I will show you guys how I made these cards. Peach irises. I actually have peach irises growing in my backyard. I came across them a couple years ago at one of our local garden centers, and oh, did I buy that thing in a heartbeat. <laughs> like I said, I love irises. I didn't even know they came in peach colors, and oh. So pretty. So for my first time using this die set, I was like, I am going to copy what I have so far managed to keep alive. We'll see if they come back this year. They've come back. I think it's been one. I think last year was the the second season of m the ones I've got. And those that are, you know, even with my black thumb, irises technically are pretty indestructible. But my peach ones, oh, I just, I hope they just continue to grow and get more and more and more because they're beautiful. So anywho, all my die cuts are, I just die cut some of Simon Says Stamp's smooth white cardstock. And then I stuck all the pieces to one of my um, Altenew Ultra Sticky grid mats. And then I'm using Altenew inks today to blend onto these pieces. And the blending is going to look like a hot mess. Um, I've talked about this in other lovely layers videos with these die cuts you can see better in person than like on camera but you can see the areas of the die cuts that have the debossed and like which is just all the detail you know so a l the larger pieces there's only certain areas you're actually going to see and all the other areas I'm just adding some ink just around those edges just so that I don't have like white cardstock edges when I layer all the pieces together that's why it kind of looks silly and why I went just kind of around the perimeter on some of them but that's because I only need the ink right on the edge the rest of it's irrelevant it's going to get covered up by the next layers and then I went working my way just lightest to darkest with the shades of ink I chose and I'm like I said I'm using Altenew fresh dye inks these do soften and dry back quite a bit and the three colors I used are from the called Martian Martian Tundra I for, I'll have a link <laughs> to the to the quad um, but I used pastel sunrise canyon clay and then mahogany bark and I'm just using my little like waffle flower blending brushes and then for the greenery I'm using um, this quad again I think it's like forest trail something like that um, it's aloe vera matcha tea swamp green yes and then oak moss for the the stems because you've got the the big floral and then those three little pieces in the middle those are for one of the little buds and then you have the little 
the little stem for that bud and then the actual stem and leaves for the large flower. And then, like I said, you just go largest to smallest. That's it. It, it looks, especially with this set, it looks so weird. Like the pieces almost like look like a bug. That's what I was thinking. I was like, these look like beetles. But once you actually, you know, layer everything together, it's like, oh, this makes sense. Love it. Love it. So yeah, largest to smallest. It, it just, it kind of makes sense where each piece is just meant to go and how it layers on top of the next one. And then you get to the final piece and it's like, you've got your flower. And yeah, I'm going to need to play with this one more and more because I was like, you can go with so many colors. And even though, yeah, I actually copied a floral that grows in my yard, which is saying something, um, do whatever colors, you know, float your boat. I yeah, I, I can get hung up sometimes, even myself, on how things are supposed to look. But it's super fun to just do whatever. You know, make them rainbow colored. Why not? You know? So I just assembled everything. Again, largest to smallest. It all makes sense. They do have, like, Honeybee does have layering guides. Um, some sets come with it, but if yours doesn't, you can download them. You know, and they're full color layering guides. And again, it's one of those things where it's like, once you see it, kind of laid out in front of you it's like oh it just makes sense you know and once you uh, die cut and assemble just one of them yeah it, it's pretty again if I can do it anybody can do it <laughs> so after I assembled my irises for my background I pulled out some distress heavy stock this is the white heavy stock and then this is the new soiree I think that's how you pronounce it uh embossing folder from honeybee and for the anna griffin empress die cutting machine i've got the little graphic on screen this is what i figured out what works for me and these folders so it's one cutting plate the magnetic plate and then the folder with the cardstock and this time being heavy stock and i did mist it a little bit with water that just helps soften the fibers so that you get a better embossed impression so spritz a bit of water to soften it i got it centered up inside the folder where I wanted it and then I just run it through my die cut machine and these folders are like six is it six by eight not quite now I gotta double check they're they're a good size so you can use them for larger um projects five by five by seven so yeah you could use them for five by seven cards too which I kind of like so after I embossed both of the backgrounds. I showed this in a recent video and I really liked how it turned out. So I was like, I want to do that again. I sprayed um, Distress Oxide Spray and Salvage Patina onto both of these and then sprayed water and then used a tissue to kind of sop up most of it. But it still leaves like a good amount right now, like on screen. It almost looks like I took away like most of it. But in real life, like it's it's a little more vibrant. And yeah, it softens the background. I still get, you know, the splattery look, but it's not as intense as just if I just sprayed it and left it because I wanted it to be soft, just, you know, and not compete with my florals. So I did that and then set them aside to fully dry. And then for my sentiments, I'm using the new Celebrating You stamp set. And I have some black cardstock and I have it in my Misty and then the sentiments I want to use. And then I'm going to use my anti-static powder on my cardstock that's going to help keep the embossing powder from clinging to anything other than the stamped image and because these sentiments these are very like fine detail sentiments i'm one inking them up with just white pigment ink and just lightly tapping the ink pad and lightly stamping this you know i've i've been talking about this in recent videos i'm trying harder at not being so heavy-handed trying not to smush my ink pad into the stamp and not smush the stamp onto the background because especially with like sentiments like this or any like really fine detail stamps if you have a little more patience and you just stamp it multiple times with light pressure you can get the entire you know impression without losing all of that detail so I did that twice and then coated the stamped sentiments with just some detail white embossing powder then I'm going to melt that with my heat tool until everything is smooth, shiny melted, and then let that cool off for a few seconds. It doesn't take long. And I'll remove that excess anti-static powder with my microfiber cloth. It's just like swirling that on. That's where I use a decent amount of pressure. And that's where you want to make sure you got everything like melted because otherwise it's, you're just going to wipe away the embossing powder. 
So got that removed and then I'm going to use the coordinating wafer dies to die cut these sentiments. So I'm going to tape it into place with just little bits of washi tape so that these don't shift when I run them through my die cut machine. So I'm going to die cut all my sentiments and then my backgrounds are now dry. So I decided to trim these down to just slightly smaller than A2 size. I trimmed down to about four by five and a quarter roughly so that... Um, because yeah, and someone asked me why, why don't I just start with the size I want? When I am using embossing folders, a lot of times it will change the size of the cardstock you've used because, you know, it's getting pressed into different shapes, etc. So if you want to keep it A2 sized, a lot of times you need to start with something larger than A2 sized. And for me, sometimes I just make it work or trim my card base down a little bit, or I just trim it down anyway, because I like having the card base kind of framing you know, whatever my background is. So it's all up to personal preference. So after I assembled, like, or trimmed down the backgrounds, I adhered my irises to the card fronts, and I put them in my splat box so I could add some splatter. This doesn't show up right now, but I'll tilt these in the light at the end of the video. This is the picket fence paper splatter liquid watercolor in the liquid white snowflake. So it's just shimmery. Um, same sort of effect as using like Ranger Perfect Pearl powder and water just gives it a nice shimmer or as the unpaid intern said when he was looking at my cards he's like it looks like they have dew on them I'm like oh, yes you get it <laughs> he's on the splatter train friends he, he he likes it just as much as I do so after I did that I also added white gouache stuck a little bit on my palette watered it down this will um, also soften as it dries because if you water gouache down like depending on how much you water it down it'll kind of absorb the, the color, if it's, you know, reactive, which the Altenew inks are, the salvage patina oxide obviously is. So it just, as you can see, it's not like, it's not like my irises are in a blizzard. Although yeah, with the weather we get here in Saskatchewan, that, that, it, that can be a thing. You never know. But anyway, <laughs> I adhered the sentiments to the insides of the cards. And then I adhered my backgrounds to the card bases just using the same um, craft tacky glue. And then once I get the, the card fronts adhered to the card bases, I'm going to pop the happy birthday sentiments onto um, the centers of these with just some thin little foam squares. So it gives them a little bit of dimension, plus it gives it um, the ability to be adhered properly because I'm adhering on top of like a textured card base or card front as well as like the die cuts from the florals. So got those adhered. And then as my final little bit of embellishment, I'm using the new... Um, gem stickers. These are the Let's Party gem stickers, which I've made no no qualms about this. I hoard these. I hoard Honeybee's gem stickers. I hoard their pattern paper. I love them. And their wax melts. Oh, yeah. I hoard everything. Anyway, I'm, I'm working harder at, at using the things, you know, just like I tell you guys, do as I say, not as I do, but I'm also working on it. Anyway, they're self-adhesive, so I peeled them off, stuck them to the, the card, and that finished them off. So I got that bit of shimmer splatter and these pretty irises and oh, like, how can you not love the lovely layer sets? There's, oh, and wait till you see some of the other ones. Like I said, I'll have a link to the new release in the description box below the video, as well as of course, the link to my blog post, the link to my Instagram and all the supplies I use. Those will be listed and linked below as well. Thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping and commenting, letting them robot overlords know you guys like what you see. And subscribe if you haven't. I'd love to have you. And I'll see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.